Ahoy, captains! And in Mother Russia, you don't play game, game plays you. And today we're going to be featuring another Russian ship, the Khabarovsk. One of my personal favorites, I have used this in clan battles. I, uh, I've actually played more games in clan battles with the Habros than I have in randoms. <laughs> uh, and it's usually when our team isn't doing that great and I go, F it, I'm playing Habarovsk. And I just do something crazy. Uh, I'm, uh, I, I really like this ship. It's very fun for me to play. I kind of played this in Des Moines near the end of uh, the or the last day since I was only in the uh, tier 10 bracket for the last two days I played this Des Moines I think I played a little uh, Republic um, actually I had some pretty good games Republic I was going to say this is going to be our last ranked game that I would feature but I might feature a Republic game we'll see uh, but uh, so real quick what we're going to do is we're going to Look at the lineup. And let me... So, yeah, you can read it. You can read it. I don't need it more clear than that. So we got two battleships. We got a Montana, Yamato. We have a Kerr first in Montana. And then we we have a Minotaur Hindenburg as our cruisers. Minotaur, if he's radar equipped, which judging by his positioning currently, is not. And then we have a... They have a Des Moines and Hindenburg. Hindenburg is tricky for the Kaba because because of that one fourth pen rule that the Hindenburg HE shells get is it does pen that fifty millimeter uh, plating that the Kaba has, which is kind of trollish for other cruisers and why many cruisers who have engaged Kabas frequently and know how to shoot it they usually use AP because it does a good amount of damage. Uh, Hindenburgs can kind of stick with HE and still deal consistent damage to you. And that makes them a problem. It's a 3DD game. And what I'm anticipating is A is such a small cap. And judging that we have a Minotaur and all, pretty much all, I, I said everyone go north except me and Shema. And the idea was is that I was going to shadow the Shema. And I'll, I'll be talking more about shadowing in a bit. I'm not going to be able to show it this game because it doesn't happen. But I'll talk about what the idea behind it is. Um, but if I could shadow the Shem on this side, if a DD came to this side, we could literally just wreck it outright. It, it, it wouldn't even be funny how fast it would die. Um, but that doesn't happen. And uh, our Shema wanted to go to C at first. You kind of see him in the chat there. Uh, it's a free cap. You get it then. Like he's upset that I wanted to get C when what the hell am I going to do at A? Like I dive in and potentially die without properly shadowing another dd which our gearing is playing so far back i wouldn't be able to shadow him anyway and then you have you know c is the best place for me to go i'm the fastest dd on our team i can I, I can handle myself if i get overwhelmed and that's mainly me knowing what i can do in it and we'll go ahead and keep the keep the game going so this video doesn't end up being too long but I and so I'm going to explain to this Shema what I wanted you to do was the spot for me. I was going to shadow you. Now, what do I mean by shadowing? And this is a this is a concept that not many people know how to do. And you could do this in any ship. And they're going to keep telling me to come to A over and over, um, despite how dumb it would be. But a shadowing, what you do when you want to shadow a destroyer, you have to one know the destroyer's detection. A Shimakaze is 5.6, if built correctly. I'm 9.7. You subtract his from yours and add a couple hundred meters to it. That way he spots, th that way he, when he gets spot, or he, he, he'll spot them, or he'll get spotted before you, and you get that ambush. You, you stealth ambush him. So let's say if it's a Shima that was that I was using to shadow here, I would sit back at about 5 kilometers about four and a half to five kilometers is what I would sit back in the Shima. Shima spots them. I open fire. And even the Shima, if it's only one DD, the Shima can open fire. We can just shred the destroyer to pieces if he doesn't have support. Now, if he does have support, the Shima shouldn't shoot and let me take care of him and get him to back the hell off. And then we can maintain our area. But as you can see, that's coming up. They have a Montana and a Hindenburg going to A. And at this point, we're going to go ahead and pause it again. 
at this point, I see a Hindenburg and I see a Montana. I'm thinking at this point, the Hindenburg is going to cut back into B. But the Hindenburg didn't cap it. Something else capped it. So there's another cruiser there. So, either, and I'm thinking at this point, they're doing a BC push. But they have a Yamato on the other side. And Yamato is not a ship that kites well. So I'm a little confused on what their tactics are here. Um, so I'm also thinking, well, if they sent two DDs to A, with our team being as passive as they are, they might be able to secure it. So what I want to do is I want to find out what the hell do they have coming from B. I know there's a Hindenburg in Montana. Oh, and there's a Grazavoy that just got spotted. And a Geary. That just got spotted. So I was accurate in that assumption. Boom, Des Moines. I know there's Des Moines there. Shimikaze did... Him going to center was actually not bad because he gave me some early information. Um, and the Shim is not a bad player, but he does make some bad decisions this game. I actually do think the Shim is probably a decent player. He just makes some bad decisions this game that don't really help the team. So I'm going to harass this Des Moines a little bit, but I actually really don't intend on slowing down this push too much. Um, number one, our team... I, now I've played... The, now I've featured this map quite a bit on this channel recently, maybe because I keep getting matched into it. <laughs> but uh, uh, number one thing... Okay, so I'm backing off. I'm in his... I, what, I was very close to his radar range. I just want to create distance at this point. I still haven't used my engine boost because I haven't found a reason to use it. And that's one thing is like some Kabas will blow it at the beginning to get to a position. You don't have to. You're already so fast. Use it when you need to. Use it when you plan on using your guns. Use it when you plan on doing something effective. And boom. So I pop mine. What I want to do is I'm diving straight toward mid. I need to deal with this Hindenburg. I need to do something to deter him. Now, let's look here. I'm going to pause it again on our, on our uh, positioning. Again, both battleships are right next to each other. The Yamato is doing exactly what he should. He is angled in against them, and he can get fr essentially overmatch damage, and they can't do shit because neither one of them is trying to push a flank or try to push center. None of them is creating the crossfire that they need to do anything. And with the Yamato being there, they're too scared to turn out, and they're probably going to get torped. Because they've been there for a while. I would torp it. Like, my best stats are in destroyers. I would torp that shit. That'd be the number one position I torp. Hands down. I'd be trying to get in a position just to do that. Now, our Shema, he makes a pretty big mistake by trying to go into A without the gearing supporting him. And he, he loses a lot of health. Um... Like I said, I don't think the Shem is a bad player. I just think that he that, that was a bad decision right there, and he's going to make one more to this game, but he's also going to make a really good one soon, too. So I will give him the benefit of the doubt. Our battleships are very questionable. Uh, number Montana's just going nose in in clan battles. Is, uh, not clan battles, but in ranked has been so calm, and it's ridiculous. So I see him, but I immediately switch to AP. I get a, you get a broadside in a Kaba, you take it. This damage might not seem like much when it's happening consistently. And this is going to come back again later this game. That's 5k damage on that Hindenburg. Now, if I could, now he's angled in kind of enough to where he's negating a lot of the damage. So I just decided to switch to HE. And this is kind of a tough situation. Like I said earlier, the Hindenburg can overmatch me. So right now I'm kind of playing mind games with him. I'm trying to find out where he is not comfortable with shooting me. What angle my ship in a straight line is going to mess with his aim the most. And I'm going to just keep hammering him. I'm going to keep hammering him as much as humanly possible. He's giving me enough broadside where I'm going to start using some AP, see if I can get some uh, chunk hits. Shimikaze pushes a little too much. E now, I don't... I think he pushed in a little too close to the Hindenburg, and the Hindenburg may have been running Hydro. Uh, he is going to get some clutch torpids here that are really going to help later, I think. But I see this gearing, and I got I got to take the shot. I got to kill this gearing. He's low. We need to kill him. And I do secure this kill. 
So the Hindenburg does take a, uh, a couple torps. And at this point, I'm like, I have to kill this Hindenburg. He has used his Namcon. There is no reason that I shouldn't focus this guy down and get him killed. I need to kill him. And I'm willing to trade some damage with him right now. Even if he gets me down to half health, I still have three more heals that I can use. I try to use AP, but at this point, it's just he's angled enough where I have to use HE. And I do bring it down. Now, if you are paying attention to chat this video, you'll notice how much my team essentially tries to make me do everything this game. So, I got the Hindenburg, and now... The gearing is getting the cap, and I need to help him. I look at the Montana, I got, nah, that, that ain't worth it. I tell the Shima to go and, to, you know, stall them. Uh, apparently, he takes that way too literally and tries to actually get in the cap, which all I wanted him to do is throw torps at them. And he will die. He, he's definitely going to die. So I know where their DDs are. I know where the Grazavoy is just now, and I know there's a DD in that smoke. I'm going to take some pot shots at this Graz, but then the gearing spot. I spot the gearing. And at first I thought he was going forward, but he's, his smoke was actually back. That's why the rear shots happened. I missed my first shot, and now I know what he's trying to he, He's trying to run away. So I cut my speed, and I chuck some shots at him. Someone else gets the kill. That's okay. Although, at the end of this game, I'm going to kind of wish I got that kill. And the Des Moines of Montana make a reappearance. So I need to start moving. And it, uh, if they haven't already in chat, they are going to say, Hey, we need you to deal with these BBs, Kaba. Um, Gearing says he's on his way to B. That's exactly what I'm doing. So let's go ahead and give this a quick pause real quick. We'll, we'll, we'll do it here. Right now, they have two caps. B is completely open. I'm the fastest DD. I well outpace a gearing. Even if the gearing is engine boost, the gearing with engine boost isn't as fast as a Kaba without it. So I'm say I'm thinking let's let's get to B. Let's run to B because I can get get our team with the two cap advantage. We have three ships in the north. Now, if you were paying attention to chat, you will notice that they kept calling me to come to A over and over and over. There wasn't much I could do. Aside from diving in at A and trying to take on all three DDs by myself, there really wasn't much. Because a Hindenburg is a better fire support than me at range, above A. And there wasn't much I'd be able to do there. And actually killing that Hindenburg in the middle with the Shema, and again, the Shema was a decent player. And they keep, they, they, they're going to say very soon, hey, we need your help with this battleship. Okay. I'm already on it, dude. So I get one fire. And I'm like, okay, that might be enough. If he lets it burn, we're good. I'm going to keep chucking shots while I'm not spotted. And then I notice something. He repairs my first fire. So I say, screw AP. Because this is a good angle for AP. Um, if, if you land them right. And you just saw you know, 3.5k every 3.5 seconds. That's, that's damn good shit. Now, the Des Moines and, and uh, Montana are going to harass me the entire time I do this, but I want another fire. I really want it. And you can already see how much I'm outpacing the, the gearing. The gearing is... So I got one fire, and at this point, I'm kind of taking more damage than I'd like. So I'm kind of trying to evade a little more. I want to get into the cap. And then I get a second fire, and I go, okay, now's the time. I'm just going to go undetected. I don't need to do anything at this point. The Amato's got two fires that he can't repair. And then he f completely screws up and gives broadside to the Montana, who I'm not 100% sure if he's the one who kills him, but yeah, Henneberg ends up burning him down, too. He got a third fire, so Yamato's done. Yeah, and that MN73 is... Uh, telling me, hey, I need to go for the battleships. I have the most health of all the DDs. I'm also getting the most focus in this game, but it's okay. I don't mind carrying. Now, okay, so I'm going to pause it again. At this point, we have a Garaza voice somewhere. It's unlikely he's gone past A. 
It's unlike where his position is, is probably between me and the Montana. Now, we do have a Montana Des Moines that will need to be deal dealt with. But at this point, Grozovoy is the biggest threat to my team. So I'm going to go and try, and I'm spotted. So that tells me Grozovoy is near me. I do ping roughly where I think he might be. Um, because I think he might want to torp the Montana, and that would be the best torp zones for the Montana. I turn in in case he's torping me. And Montana and Des Moines are immediately lighting or uh, immediately aiming at me, or at least the Des Moines and Graz is. And then I see the Graz, and I want to chuck some shots. And it, it's at round my I think my second shot where I realize, oh yeah, the Graz is fast. I need to aim a little more ahead. So I'm turning the other way to throw off any torps he may have shot. Right there is definitely where I realize, okay, I need to lead a little more. And I get the kill. And at this point, we're ahead by about 200, a little over, a little under 250 points. And at this point, I'm just going to poop on Des Moines. Des Moines struggles to hit a cob at this range, uh, especially a cob that knows how to maneuver. And I, you're going to see me consistently screw with them. I'm going to cut my speed. I'm going to turn left and right in weird ways. And here I am cutting my speed, throwing off all his shots. And then I'm going to speed up after he misses two volleys. And he's going to shortchange me immediately after. This is what you do on a cob to keep people guessing. You don't want to do the same ev evasive maneuvers over and over. You need to keep changing it up. You need to keep him guessing. And, it, and very soon, I'm going to start switching to AP because he's giving me a very beautiful broadside. And I'm, by very soon, I mean immediately when I set it. And you're going to start noticing you know, that was a, the first, you know, I thought I missed that shot. You know, that was a, that was a good, sh good shot. Once I start getting my bearings in on this guy, on where he's going, you know, you're going to start seeing, you know, either 4K, 1 you know 2k but that's happening every 3.5 seconds for him that's a lot of damage and people really underestimate the value of ap on destroyers um, specifically the kaba you know, you'll see kabas that never switch their ammo like that's the time too now i'm switching to he now because i think he's going to turn out primarily due to torps if he's running hydro now, he is probably going to get killed by this torp, but I'm still going to hammer him because he is a big threat if he gets an AP salvo against some of our cruisers to be a problem. And this full health Montana is going to end the game with uh, nothing. So, if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. I hope you liked it. Have a good day.